thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Um, you're welcome to this session. Uh, we want to speak today um, to gas industry in Nigeria. We want to speak to gas as um, the country has been playing in it. We want to speak to some issues and we want to, you know, even generate some hope because um, whenever we speak about gas, it seems as if the story is dismal. However, we've had some traction and that will also be highlighted as I speak. I hope everyone on the other end can hear me clearly. So, um, you know, the focus is really as gas as an enabler. For us, we say gas is revenue, gas is jobs. Gas can guarantee us economic security. Now, um, why do we even say this? Now, we look at the volumes we have. I think officially we're talking of, of right now about um, 202 TCF of gas. Now, let me just say here, we all know this. Nigeria is actually more of a gas nation and is even crude. Now, we have unproven reserves of about 600 TCF uh, uh, of gas, yet unlocked, you know, unproven. And as I speak to you, for all the gas that we have in this country, we haven't even touched even a tenth of it yet. Most of the gas volumes you're looking at today are gas volumes that have been touched from um, generated from crude oil um, drilling activities. We haven't really gone for gas, gas for gas, gas development for gas. Um, most of the ground, the, the, the gas honestly is still trapped in the ground. Now, um, for us, we've done extensive studies about gas where it's worked in other parts of the world, Saudi Arabia, other uh, regions of the world where they've tapped into their resources, unlocked this potential. For us, gas is even a cleaner energy. The world has moved on and we need to recognize that in Nigeria. So as I speak to you, uh, uh, there are reports that have been done that showing that direct, there's a direct correlation between gas development, natural gas investment in gas development and economic you know, growth. So this is what we always you know, say, we put in a dollar uh, um, in gas investment and it gives you about, you know, it, it earns you around $3 uh, uh, in GDP. We're talking about investing in gas to drive industrialization. There's even a direct correlation between investment in gas and then power, you know, generation. I mean, this is like getting gas across the, the, the entire uh, mile chain uh, to the last man mile, generating jobs, opening up more GBIs, talking about more fertilizer uh, 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 projects, methanol projects, petrochemicals, uh, commercial, you know, steel industries that can replicate, that can give us uh, uh, the kind of jobs we're looking for. I mean, the statistics just came out, I think it was the MBS that released some statistics um, about two, three days ago, we're speaking to unemployment levels of about 21%. That is really worrisome. I mean, even for me, sometimes I'm even worried about how good we are with data in Nigeria. So honestly, if you ask me, I even think it might be even worse than that. So we need to open up. We've, we've talked about this for too long. We need to get into the doing. For as long as we're taking all this, the world has moved along. And the thing here is that Nigeria is strategically positioned to even become a hub for gas in Africa. Even if we don't do the entire Africa, we can start along the corridor, you know, within the Gulf of Guinea. Open up. Um, there's so much that I'm focused on taking this gas uh, outside the world. That's okay. But what about opening up here domestically and then I'll cross the value chain, you know, from here into the West African, you know, region. All those are, are things that we need to begin to look at. So take a look, for instance, a project like um, Train 7. We've put some figures to it and it said um, about one point, I think that would be 1.27 BCF, is going to yield well over 4,000 jobs. We're talking of economic uh, recovery, uh, ERGP, the, you know, the recovery growth for economy. These are directly linked to opening up jobs, driving the GDP. Our GDP is almost, you know, it's, 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 you can't look at the resources we have and then look at the dismal figures. It's just not adding up. And so um, for us this morning, I think that's, that's well said at this time, you know, speaking to, you know, what the issues are. But as we progress, I would like to talk as a company, what we're doing. Um, we always say here, look, this is Nigeria built by Nigerians. We are an whole indigenous firm, and we've done some things that uh, you know um, forward into gas development. Um, so I will just gladly, you know, quietly move into that. Whilst as we speak, there we we'll talk to some of the issues around the gas industry, pricing, um, tariffs. Uh, we speak to some of the policies that have come, and um, just also note there's been some traction from the government side. Uh, but there's some also some things we think that can be done better 
um, the government, the minister, the honorable minister for uh, honorable minister for state for petroleum has even announced 2020 as a year of gas. We've seen some one or two things despite the lockdown, one or two things um, that have happened this year. Um, what I will say before I venture into what the Conde on OML 42 is doing is saying that for me, during this COVID period, I said natural gas is a new crude. Um, it's a hedge. It's, it's, I don't even think it's the future, it's the now. The rest of the world has actually moved ahead. Um, for us here, we need to look at what we have on hand. We need to look at what we're going to do about this. Um, crude oil prices will always drop. You have the, the geopolitical situation. So someone catches a cold in Russia and then the prices drop. Someone else sneezes in Saudi, it goes haywire. So we will constantly have this cycle. But we need to establish a, a stability and that can come through gas. Um, we have seen what has happened this period over the five to six months. Crude oil prices went south, totally south. But funny enough, gas prices were fairly stable. So we need to look at how we open up, open up the internal, the, the domestic gas economy. What can we do about this? So for us on OML um, 42, where Nekonde and its JB partner, uh, the Nigerian Petroleum Development Company, being NPDC, um, we have uh, we have huge volumes of gas, huge reserves. I'm speaking to both associated and non-associated gas um, for. Uh, OML 42, we have started since December 2018. We've been delivering gas into the domestic market. And um, just to mention to the Nigerian Gas Company, um, they are our current off-takers. And we have also been working with other initiatives to see how we monetize the volume we have, how we go about zero flaring on our assets. So we have also initiated some, what we call accelerated gas programs, accelerated uh, programs on on um, on the asset. We have some infrastructure. Um, so for the delivery we're doing currently into the domestic market, we have um, infrastructure on ground uh, compressors that are pumping at least 80 million with capacity of 80 million scores. And then we have some short to medium term projects we're trying to do to gather gas across the um, the the asset and then create a hub and export into the domestic market. Uh, whilst we're doing that, we're looking at um, how do we go about this? Well, I mean, these are these are times where uh, capex, capital expenditure is really being challenged. So with the COVID situation, um, companies have had to sit back, look at their plans, their projections, uh, where is capital coming from? With gas projects, you're talking of looking for for uh, loans, you're looking for borrowing with favorable, very favorable, and if possible, single digit uh, um, interest rates. You're also talking about um, looking for, for, for loans with longer tenures. You're talking about looking for strategic partners who can help you go for this market. Funding is very contingent on something in the gas business, and that's a bankable market. You want paying customers, you want to be able to invest some of the issues we have with the gas industry is that investors can't really see a clear line of sight. Why? Because we have issues like PIB, we have the general Nigerian economic climate, you have the um, uh, forex mismatch, you have liquidity issues in the power sector, which happens to be the biggest, you know, off-taker of gas. Um, but for us, um, in a conde, whilst we're juggling around with the funding. Um, we also have strategic alignment with our partners. Uh, our partners, uh, just to mention here, direct um, the EMP and um, the EMP arm, which is the exploration and, and production arm of NMPC, uh, being NPDC. With both partners have agreed that we need to monetize, we need to key into zero flaring, and we need to drive the Nigerian economy. This is, like I said, putting in volumes that can change things, putting in volumes that can open up industries. And so uh, that is what we have started doing. Um, the last time I was speaking to this, we had just moved on to one or two things. But now there are more projects that come accelerated. We want to call them, they are being referred to as accelerated projects that we are working on short term. So, I mean, for those who may be or not familiar with our assets, we've got the OGD, we've got Jones Creek, where we're looking at a gas pipeline um, export pro uh, pro project. We've got Ego and Batan with significant volumes uh, where we're trying to pump to, to DD. Um, the NAT volumes on OML 42, we're talking about anywhere between 3.8 TCF. And the mandate is to monetize this 
and see if we can, in the next year or two, contribute to at least a 12% of uh, gas uh, production in Nigeria. Now, um, that would take a whole lot of strategy and just to say that I have a key mandate for that. I'm a key driver for that. Yes, so I'm constantly juggling uh, with partners. I'm constantly in financing discussions. I'm constantly uh, looking for solutions. And um, it's been interesting because with the gas market, what you see is you work it backwards. Yeah, so you have to generate the market first. So even part of the partnerships we're looking for, or part of some of the partners we're speaking to, we're looking at partners who understand the market, partners with skin in the game, partners who understand what it takes to, to tie down customers, paying customers, bankable customers, because guess what? You don't have a game par par partner or customer, what you have a, along the entire value chain is a lockdown, part of what we see in the power sector today. So um, for us, these are some of the things we've been doing um, 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 on OML42. Uh, it remains a key mandate to make sure we invest, the investments come back, and we see the replication of this investment in our contributions. that will suffer significant delays on the legislative and executive arms of government working with us to you know, pass this PIB. The PIB, when it was initially brought up, and at some stage we were able to okay, break it down and um, that brought the advent of the gas policy. But we still have some four critical parts still you know, hanging. And I'm speaking to the fiscal part of it, I'm speaking to the impacted community part of it, I'm speaking to uh, the, what's it called, uh, I can't remember, on a governance part, and then administration, industry administration bill. Those are still outstanding. And I think it was the last two or three days I, I, I saw in the papers that uh, the, the bill is being taken back again to the NAS, okay, to the house. So it's going to do the rounds once again. We have been at this since um, maybe it's a decade now. Yes, we need to get serious. There's no, there's no serious investor that's going to put money in an environment that is not, that is not backed by a legal framework. I mean, you want to put your money and you want to be sure it will come out. Look, when the destination for 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 investment comes to Africa, there there's so many factors that are at play. Capital is not readily available. Not to even mention what has happened in the world. The world was not ready for COVID, and it challenged, and it's still challenging the capital that is available right now. So we need to set some certain things in place. If we're going to create, and the government needs to concentrate on creating and sending signals that are important to investors. You don't want to put in your money where um, um, if you, you don't have a, a, a framework, a legal framework backed by law to ensure that that money comes back, that capital comes back. Let, let me just stress a few things here. So take a look at uh, down the road from us, Ghana. Ghana, in a, just a few years back, discovered gas. Even so, you know they don't have a, a an industry that's as, as, as robust as ours. But guess what? They've tidied up their act. Ghana has now put in use of. I mean, they've, they've deliberately, and this is the catch here. This is the key word deliberately you, we need to be deliberate about our actions even as individuals if you know you want results you need to put your, your you know put in place things that will work ghana has opened up most of their cars use a cng they're working on they've set they put in place their, their local content they put in place their things they put in place what resembles their own uh, pid i mean look at mozambique and yet we are the giant of the gas in africa with huge volumes so we, it is. This is critical, and I know the the, the honourable minister of state, um, as it is, he's he's, he's ticked some um, some action, some highlights that he wants to focus on, and I, I think this is one of it. He has said 2020 is the year of gas. So in this year, he's been working on uh, some couple of great projects. the big picture so maybe i may not give you one level answer to this question yeah so um you need to understand the peculiarities of first of all doing business in nigeria 
doing business in Nigeria is not easy. Two, we want to speak to gas pricing. Not that for the gas we're talking about, we need more volumes in the system, and those more volumes that we're looking for will come from gas development, investment in infrastructure, investment in upstream, drilling wells, opening of wells, using FX. Now, please note that most of these activities are for FX based. We, we, don't, we don't do them in Naira. We use FX to bring up this gas. Now, you have to make sure the market you know, opens up and accepts this at prices that also make sense to the investor. So now we begin to talk about a willing buyer, a willing seller situation. What we have continued to advocate is to sort of see if we can generate what happened in the telecom um, sector, which is, so initially, it might look, uh, we have a few players, so we need to encourage more players to come, you know, on, on board. Um, we need more players to come on board and, and, invest and then over time liberalize the market initially when the gsm came out you just had one or two players but over time when we got more people coming in um there was the prices the tariffs began to drop that is exactly what we need needs to happen in the, um, the gas industry we need to allow investments to come in at prices that can make sense to those who brought in the money as well as making a consideration for affordability so um, just to, to note here, um, I'm also on the current council of the Nigerian Gas Association. So part of the conversations we've been driving, um, even with the government, across stakeholders on, along the value chain, is to look at the possibilities of um, how these conversations can be held. Um, most times when people have them, they tend to want to speak about maybe export parity, maybe which is where, where you're coming from. Now let's be specific. Export parity is gas, for example, that uh, LNNG is doing. You can't compare that to gas that's been uh, um, drilled and you know brought up in country. With LNG, that gas is packaged with less, no more. Uh, I mean, not so much work done, and it's exported. With gas that is drilled in country, there's a whole lot of work. You have different overheads like security. You have to strip that gas. You have to clean that gas. You have to process that gas, and then send it to suppliers. Guess what? It has to be taken care of. You have probably will be channeling it into uh, transmission pipelines that have to be paid for. You have to be channeling it to uh, LDCs that probably will help you with the market end. And eventually, we're trying to create the balance. So um, just to give you some array of hope there, uh, recently, the Honorable Minister of State also uh, put together a panel, um, a team rather, that is looking at this gas pricing thing. Um, it, it has been spoken to for too long. Uh, what we're trying to do is to see, use a methodology around arriving at a, a, a price that works for everyone along the value chain. There's going to be considerations um, at some point, yes, uh, affordability. So part of this uh, consideration may be what happened in, I think this was, if I'm correct, I think with the rebasing of gas prices in 2018, where it was segmented into strategic, uh, uh, commercial, and then um, gas based industry for now tell me please note as long as there's a ceiling uh, for this gas investment we need to be careful it's not going to be very attractive uh, what we need to do is in, in attract fdis for investment and you know that there are so many other factors that can be you know stated here now when you see that i mean i mean these sort of conversations real time every day i also run a very serious commercial you know uh, arm of this business you sit down every day and you look at how environmental factors business factors real-time factors in the nigeria economy is affecting your numbers scuffling your, your your economics all this has to be brought into context so where the conversation needs to start is we will start with the methodology looking at this pricing thing but the fact must remain it must make sense for every investor and over time we do believe that the market will open up and pricing should I and mean, when you have more players pricing should be better What the network code is seeking to achieve really is to help to liberalize the market. So this is all driven towards an open access regime. 
all right if you know a bit about uh, what's uh, uh, available now it's um, it's more around a certain monopoly with NGC. However, the, N the, the network code is seeking, is seeking to encourage shippers, transporters, just trying to use get, get um, users to use the infrastructure more, open up. So the arrangements that need to, to be done, uh, can be done, um, companies and users can contract volume upstream and then speak to transmitters uh, and then shippers and then sort it all out. What this will bring with a COVID situation is really just encouraging the use of gas. Um, for us, the network code has come to stay. It is something we have been you know, advocating for a very long time. It's also a, you know, an enabler for the gas master plan. So if you, you know about the gas master plan, which came up, I think it's 2008, um, what the gas master plan was trying to do is really to see if we can have a crisscross of uh, um, gas infrastructure all over the country to see how we can get more industries to open up. Um, a part of that, if I may speak in this, you know, as I'm talking now, is even the AKK, which was launched recently. So the AKK is taking gas all the way from Adjokuta, uh, Kaduna, Kano. And along that entire corridor, is taking it to some serious uh, power projects. And um, what typically happens with this kind of infrastructure projects is that you see industries opening up along that way. And there are going to be some small lines. Now, those small lines are where you need a framework, which is where this network code has come into. You need a framework that will guide the relationship for people who are interested in taking gas and then you know, supplying it, taking gas and reaching, accessing markets, taking gas and building, uh, probably even. Um, uh, infrastructure that can compress gas. So, you, if you're aware, you have CNG uh, um, projects in country, you have CNG businesses, you have LNG coming up. So, the network code is seeking to open up and we need it. We, what we're saying now is we need to be serious. We need to create that enabling environment. Part of this is the enabling environment. With this COVID situation, there's going to be a recovery. I mean, there are going to be different strategies how. Um, companies, off-takers collaborate to see how they survive in this. I think initially I've spoken at some point to uh, joint ventures, partnerships, uh, what we even call competition, people collaborating with uh, perceived competition. Uh, but you need a framework. You need a framework to help with all this, even the advent of the gas flare commercialization program. So we're talking of on the backdrop of the 2018 flare regulation. We are speaking to more people putting in place infrastructure that encourages uh, uh, um, reduction of gas flaring and you need a framework i mean this is just a smaller pib so to say you need a legal framework that will guide that uh, um, that relationship the, the gas industry as it is today in nigeria is not exactly um, in fact it's not it's not fully developed so there are a whole lot of lessons to be learned and what can help us are these legal frameworks that we put into place If you look at Nigeria as it is, I think 80% of the gas volumes we have in country is used in the power sector. And that power sector is on complete lockdown. You know, the investments that are going in there, there's so many issues. Mm. So when you're investing, you want to be you want to be very serious. You, you want to know where your money is going and how it's going to come out. Funding is very contingent on uh, on this market. You're talking to a bankable, credible market. Market that can possibly even provide you guarantees that you can fall back on. Uh, those are some of the challenges we've seen and then of course accessing finance. I've said this before, uh, gas does not have, uh, permit me to say, all the flesh that crude oil has. So with your gas investments, you need, you need loans that can give you longer tenure, you need loans that can give you, uh, if you possibly get loans at better interest rates, um, so that your economics plus or minus you know, can take the loss and hit for us. You can put it down, uh, put the investment down. The power sector has to be dealt with. We need to get more creative around what happens in that sector. So the traditional way may no longer work. Uh, we probably may have to start looking at smaller power projects um, where you, you, you get some stranded gas molecules, set up a processing facility or a compression facility, whatever the I mean, technology may be, and then you put in those uh, uh, volumes, generate power, to paying customers. It is in clear terms what we have 
as issues in the power sector today, whether it's from flare gas, whether it's from gas generator and upstream, whether it's from, it is the illiquidity issue. And those are some of the things we need to deal with, especially if you are talking to gas volume and you know, the power sector. I hope I've answered some of those questions. Uh, yeah. so that it, um, from the statistics I re usually, uh, recently um, accessed with DPR, I know uh, portions of it go back into, some major portions of it go back into the option for reinjection. Uh, power takes a huge part of it. You have uh, the little part going to industries and so forth. Uh, to speak specifically um, to those figures here, I wouldn't say on, unless I can open up uh, some data. We're weighing it around what's possible. Um, so whilst we understand there's a need to do more with virtual uh, gas pipelines, be it CNG, be it LNG, uh, that market is what we're still exploring and it's looking more like um, approaching the market with partners that have maybe skin in the game already, partners who are already in the business, partners who understand this market, partners we can access the market with, partners who have, uh, uh, have learned in the process, uh, partners that we can ride on the back of. This is what the conversations are looking like for us. But of course, we've been inundated with other requests for uh, companies who are interested in uh, you know working with us to capture the gas and then use whatever technology available um, and export. So that's how I would like to deal with it at this stage. Um, the Nigerian Gas Master Plan is, and it still is a, a, a beautiful idea. Um, I think I've spoken to you at some point in this conversation, saying um, the idea when it was contrived really, was to see how we can create a framework, a crisscross of gas pipelines. All I mean, for the volumes of gas we have, I, I do remember that even the AKK is supposed to be a part of gas pipeline running all the way to North Africa. For me, really, from this end, it would be uh, just to say uh, we're committed. Um, I think I dropped that mantra when I was speaking to say uh, this is Nigeria built by Nigerians. Um, we can't leave our country, you know, and just take off. Not everyone can take off to Canada. So we, we we're here. And we're going to do all it takes as an indigenous firm. Uh, for those who may know a bit of the story, um, the Les Oil Group is a wholly indigenous Nigerian company that has tried over the years against all odds, you know, against all the ease of doing business in Nigeria and been developing and uh, foreign in the Nigerian oil and gas industry. So this is the same energy we want to replicate when you come to, you know, for gas. Gas is the now. And here at Nekonde Gas, we're doing all it takes. Will it be finance, taking out the right partnerships, um, looking for markets? We, we are committed to, to, like I said, seeing how we can, you know, jointly uh, come together and then develop the Nigeria economy. See how we can help to raise the GDP. To see what we can help to contribute to a recovery, economic recovery. I think as I begun in this conversation, I was speaking to some of the dismal statistics we've been looking at. So we, we can't leave this country for, you know, for others. We need to stay here. A couple of us are going to stay here and still make sure this works. A, um, on, a, on a closing note, that would be it for me. Um, we are, we're open to, you know, ideas. We're open to those who are interested. Like I said, we get inundated by different requests. We get inundated with different ideas. The bottom line is just to make it work on OML 42. Um, also, we want to thank our partners, our JV partners on uh, OML 42 being the NPDC, um, the e and arm of NMPC. They have been also working with NMPC corporate to drive home, um, you know, what the government is trying to achieve with gas for now in the country. So um, we, we, we just look forward to doing the best and then you know, making gas a success on OML 42. That will be it for me. Thank you.